bore da a chryso cynnas i chi un hadoliad o'r rhinewydd y bore yma a hitha y sil cyntaf o mis Gorffennaf. Good morning and a very warm welcome to you to our worship this morning from Newtown. It is indeed the first Sunday of July and so we gather together for this virtual worship. Gwyddion, let us pray. Dio dati o'ch i ti am ddod ni at yn gilydd unwaith drach efn. Father God, we thank you for bringing us together on this occasion. Pray for one another wherever we may be and giving thanks, Lord, for your presence with us, for you have given us the promise where two or three are gathered in your name, you are present with us. Father God, we invite you and we embrace you. Amen. Dan ni'n cychwyn efo ymyn draddodiadol wi begin a worship with a traditional hymn. In 1960, a religious persecution broke out in the territory of Sudan in Africa. A Christian black student named Taban fled the danger and went to Uganda. While in Uganda, he studied for the priesthood within the Catholic Church and was ordained. When things settled down in Sudan, young Father Taban returned to his homeland but his African congregation found it hard to believe that he was really a priest. Father Tabin says, The people looked hard at me and asked, Do you mean to say, black man, that you are a priest? We can't believe it. These people had never had a black priest before. They had always had white priests who gave them clothing and medicine. Young Father Tabern was from the Madai tribe and had nothing to give them, as he was poor like them. To make matters worse, Father Tabern had to introduce them to the changes of the Second Vatican Council. These changes bothered the people greatly. They said to one another, This young man turns our altar around and celebrates Mass in our own language. He cannot be a real priest. Only after a great deal of difficulty did the people of Palotoka finally accept Father Taben. Father Taben experienced rejection by the people of Palotoka because 
he was one of them. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus had a similar experience. Listen to our reading this morning, read to us by Sarah Randall. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Diolch. Thank you, Sarah. Our text finds Jesus returning home from Nazareth. His return to his hometown doesn't go the way one might expect it to. After all, Jesus is something of a celebrity by this time. He's been going around the countryside preaching, teaching, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead and controlling the forces of nature. He has proved beyond doubt that there is something very special and very different about him. But his very own people, including friends and family, reject him. The emotion that stands out on his part and theirs is astonishment. They reflect on who Jesus is, based on the past categories by which they've known him. He is the carpenter. They know him by the work he did in the past. He is the son of Mary. There is no mention of Jesus' father, which is insulting because in Jewish culture, at that time, you were never known as the son of your mother, even if she was a widow. Jesus is the brother of people they know by name, who are not extraordinary. What they say about Jesus as carpenter, son and brother is true, but it paints far less than a complete and accurate picture of who Jesus is by now. There is a saying, familiarity breeds contempt. And the saying, which originated from Jesus' own words, prophets are not without honour, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. In a way, the problem of the people is, they are so sure who Jesus was, they cannot see who he is. Now this can happen in communities and families, where someone is always seen through the lenses of the past, or their childhood, or youth. You're always little Annie or Johnny, no matter what you've done, or where you are now in life. The people are so surprised and disbelieving. They can see that Jesus has wisdom and that power is at work in him, but they are incredulous and sceptical. Now we can reflect and say, I'd never respond in that way, but I wonder, can familiarity with Jesus over a period of time dull our belief in what he can do? 
In turn, Jesus' response is also one of astonishment at their unbelief. The contrast is stark between the remarkable words and deeds of Jesus to this point in Mark's Gospel and his own people's unbelief. According to Mark, this led to Jesus being unable to do any deed of power there. Now this doesn't mean that Jesus can't do anything unless we also have faith, because there are several stories of Jesus healing people regardless of their lack of faith. However, it is clear that the attitude of the people around him clearly had a dampening effect on Jesus' work and ministry. It also marked the end of his time in Nazareth. Rather than stay and argue with his own people or try to convince them, Jesus moved on. Rather than fight, Jesus left to find a more receptive audience. The bad news is Jesus is rejected and he leaves. The good news is that rejection does not serve to discourage him, nor does it put a stop to his work. Rejection hurts and in turn causes other feelings as well, like a domino effect. Perhaps we may feel embarrassed, lonely or sad. When we are rejected or feel rejected, we are wise if we learn from what Jesus does in this passage. Faced with rejection, Jesus didn't wallow in self-pity. He didn't start a fight. He didn't lash out at the people. He carried on and moved on. The rejection at Jesus' hometown synagogue did not hinder the mission for long. In fact, it may have given impetus to the commissioning of the Twelve for their first assignment. This is why Jesus has chosen the Twelve Disciples and prepared them to continue with his mission. But just before he sent them out, Jesus experienced rejection as a sign of what was to be expected in their work and life also. What do we take from this passage from Mark today? Number one, don't underestimate Jesus. Number two, don't be so sure of what you know, that you're not open to God doing new things. Number three, can you see things that don't fit your expectations? Number four, be careful how you measure people, especially those you've known a long time. Be like a tailor, measure everyone new each time you see them. They may have changed. Number five, if you've been rejected, follow the example of Jesus and the disciples. Go and do something for someone else rather than wallowing in self-pity. Number six, just as Jesus sent the disciples out on a journey of faith to live and share the good news, we also are sent on a similar journey today. We are to travel light and trust God and persevere for the long haul. Number seven, we are accountable for sharing, not for results. And number eight, Always remember, if you're having a hard time with human rejection in some form, that in God's eyes, we are all beloved. Let me end by introducing the next hymn. George Matheson was a brilliant young man who was engaged to a woman he loved very much. He was troubled by weak eyes and was told that he would soon be totally blind. Just before their wedding, his fiancée told him she wouldn't marry him because she couldn't face life with a blind man. Matheson never married. But the wounds of this rejection gave us a hymn 
that has comforted countless thousands of God's children. The words trace for us the journey we must all take in life. O oh, love, that wilt not let me go. on Higwisi, news of our churches. Well, there's a new baby boy having been born, making June Pritchard a member of All Saints Church, a grandmother for the first time. And so congratulations to June and to mum and dad, Hannah and Joseph Rice, upon the birth of their firstborn son, Henry John Jordan Rice, who came to the world at the good weight of 10 pounds. We have birthdays. Robin and Nikki Midgley celebrated their birthdays last week and so did Jean Winchester. And this coming week on Wednesday, Cecilia will be celebrating her birthday and Eileen Skilton on Thursday. Pembroke Happy is a very happy birthday to each and every one of you. A word of thanks. Thank you to Margaret Jandrill for opening her garden yesterday and greeting all who came. 
and the proceeds going towards the Newtown Food Bank and the building project at All Saints. We are very appreciative. Thank you, Margaret. And thank you to the Masons at uh, Newtown for their generous check of £1,750 towards our church work. Diolchabawd iawn. We also congratulate Alice Butler on having a first honours degree from Durham University. What a wonderful achievement. Congratulations, Alice, and all the best for the future. We're all very proud of you, and so is Mum and Dad and Fion, I know. We'll be led in prayers by Pam and Peter Thompson. May I ask you to hold these people and situations in your prayer this coming week? Please pray for the soul of Martin Beck, whose funeral will be this coming Tuesday. Pray for Patrick, his son, and Follin. We continue to pray for Carlos and Dougie and Evie and Ronnie. Pray for Ted who is now home from hospital and for his wife Elizabeth. Pray for Tom who continues to be in hospital and for his wife Edna. And pray for Les Dot who is spending some time with his son and daughter-in-law. And now we continue with Peter and Pam. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you say that we are never too young, never too old, to be part of your work in spreading the good news. We ask you, Lord, to meet us where we are now and to meet us in our need so that we may give our lives to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. To all your people, give your heavenly grace, and especially to those taking part in this service today, and also to our clergy, Archdeacon Barry, Reverend Nia, and Reverend Jeanette, that we may serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We bring before you the concerns of our nation, and the world. We re remember in particular the continuing coronavirus situation and those affected by it. We give you thanks for the amazing progress that has been made by the vaccination rollout. We pray for those who may be reluctant to participate in the programme and ask that they turn to you for the guidance they seek. We also pray that those countries that have an abundance of vaccines will readily donate as much as they can to the countries that are not so well blessed. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We ask for your help and comfort for them. And we remember especially those mentioned by Nia and in a moment of silence, we bring before you those known to us personally. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. We bring before you those mentioned by near and those known to us personally. and according to your promises, grant us with them a share of your eternal freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With increasing debate about climate change and the effect the Western world is having on other countries, especially those in the Pacific region, we ask you to help our churches become more eco-friendly so that we can play our part in reducing carbon emissions. Merciful, Merciful Father, Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for, for the sake, sake of your Son, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. And let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, dyma ni wedi dod a ddiwedd yn hamser o addoliad gyda'n gilydd i noestra chefn, tan y tro nesa, neu fydd y gwasanaeth nesa a'r sil cyntaf mis awst. This brings us to the end of our time of worship together once again. And until next time, the next service will be on the first Sunday of August. After this prayer, I offer you a very special song for me. I love this song. When I heard it the first time, it struck uh, my heart very uh, significantly and beautifully and meaningfully and I heard the song for the first time ever in the worship place at Coromila in Northern Ireland, a place of reconciliation. Gwyddion, let us pray. Loving God, draw us on that journey to the places of holiness, the places of peace, the places of fellowship, the places of encounter, the places of beauty, the places where faith has been lived, your love made known, your hope held out in the past, for the present, into your future. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you, this day and always. Amen. I arise today through the strength of heaven, light of sun, radiance of moon. Splendor of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of wind, depth of the sea, stability of earth, firmness of rock. I arrive.